It's not uncommon for an embroidery business to have thousands of embroidery designs, and it's not uncommon for an embroidery business to lose them. So let's see how Wolfcom Embroidery Studio Digital Edition helps you manage your embroidery designs. Now, as you saw from an earlier video, Design Library is a great way to open your embroidery designs, but it's so much more than just a way to open your embroidery designs. It's a way to manage, categorize, and organize your embroidery designs so that hopefully you will never lose another embroidery design again. Now again, to access Design Library, you can select the Design Library icon on your toolbar. Or well, if you start your software in the home screen, you can access the Design Library from the Design Library link. Now the way Design Library works is, again, it looks at the designs in the folder you have selected, plus every subfolder beneath that folder. So as you click in deeper and select on new folders, you start filtering out the designs to only show the designs in that folder and any subfolders beneath that folder. But beyond just browsing and looking at the thumbnails, you can also search for designs. Say for example, I want to look for a design that I know I did for a Wolf baseball club, but I can't remember the design name or where I put it. I can just search for the keyword Wolf and it will locate that design for me. And then I can open it up into Embroidery Studio, make any changes or export it to a stitch file or print a worksheet or whatever I need to do. And there are also different ways you can display your designs in the design library. Now by default, mine has loaded with just the large icons, but I could uh, increase it to be extra large if I wanna see a little bit more. Or if I prefer a list method, I can go down to the detail or list style and just see the names and the title and dates and stitches and customer and other information. And I can also, by opening up my design information tab, when I select a design, I can see some more information about that design. In this case, for this wolf design I have selected, I have my order tab selected. I can see the title of the design, what status it's up to, whether it's in production or needs digitizing or to be sent for approval, the order number, the order date, and also the customer's details as well. So if your customer just gives you a reference number and you don't have any other information related to that design, you can also search for that in your design library and it will pull up all the designs that are linked to that order reference number. So in the case of this order reference number, I did six different designs for that customer. So let's take a look how we can take a design from Wilcom Embroidery Studio and save it into a folder to be viewed inside Design Library. Well, I'll click over to my workspace area and I'll click over to a brand new design that I've just created but I've not saved as yet. And this is a never lose an embroidery design again, which we hope with Design Library will be the case for you. Now, before I save this design, I want to add additional information to the design file to help me find it later down the track when I'm searching for it. So I click on the information tab. And in this tab, I can fill in as much information as I want relating to the order or the design itself. So in this case, it needs a title. Never lose an embroidery file again. And for the design status, maybe it has to be sent to the customer for approval. So I'm waiting for it to be uh, approved. So sent to customer. And the order number, it could either be my internal order number or maybe the customer has provided me an order number, but we'll do 555032. And then I can put in the customer's detail here. In this case, it might be Acme Kitchens. And then maybe a reference number from the customer, PO12345. And then you can continue to fill out as much information as you want. What type of product it is, the position, the quantity, uh, the order and the colors, and including doing a color size matrix as well. So in the case of a garment being available in different colors and sizes, you can list them here. So for this case, it might be a black garment and for size small, they want 15 shirts and for size medium, we're doing just five shirts. So you can make as many colors or quantities 
as you want here. And of course, finally, you can put any notes that you want to put against that design. Under the design tab are the technical information related to that design, which will be added automatically when you save that. So the number of stitches, the colors, the stops, objects, trims, and also any special objects you might have like applique, bling, sequin, or beads. And of course, any hoop you might put against that design as well. And finally on the summary tab is some more information that brings across the title. And these are standard fields that are associated with any uh, Windows based file. So you can add additional tags, like maybe design, embroidery, or dog, cat, anything you wanna put against that design. And of course, any additional comments or notes that you want. With all that done, I can now save that design as an EMB file. And remember you want it to be an EMB file because it is a rich file with all the object details that you can edit later in case you make a spelling mistake or want to change it or change the font. It remembers all that information. If you save only a stitch file, you lose all of that. And if you want to edit that design, it's really difficult and complicated. It is so much easier to keep that original EMB file because that is your master design that you've created. So with all that information done and ready to save away, I can go to File, Save As, and choose the folder that you wanna save that design in. You might have folders by year or by month or by customer, whatever it might be, choose your folder and give your design a name. And click Save. And that's now saved in your folder. Now if we click back over to Design Library, and click at the top. Now, somewhere in my collection of thousands of designs is that design. Again, I can visually browse through and try to find it, but that's not really practical. That's when you make use of all the searching tools in Design Library. So if my customer calls me up in a year's time and says, hey, I'd like to get that uh, design done again, and I've got a, uh, an order or a reference number for you, you say, sure, quote that number to me, and you can type that in your search bar. So 555032, press enter. And again, Welcome Design Library will go through, search your folders, find that design for you, and give you the exact design that you want. Because of all that information that you saved against that rich EMB file is forever linked to that file and available inside your design library. So if I search for the order number, or the purchase order, or the customer's name, or the title, or even look for different statuses, all those fields are searchable inside Design Library and will let you quickly and easily locate your embroidered designs. So hopefully you will never lose an embroidery design again.